year DFES research project examining ways of raising boys' achievements has found that literacy can't be separated from issues of self-esteem and preferred learning styles. Dr Eve Bean was one of the researchers. Today, she's revisiting a school in Essex which took part in the project. Ardley Green School was chosen to be part of the, uh, of the project particularly because they were scoring uh, very highly in literacy, but most particularly because the boys' and girls' uh, literacy levels were very close to each other. When we first became involved in the Raising of Boys' Attainment Project, that was the first question, what are you doing differently? And my answer was, we aren't doing anything differently, because what I fundamentally believe is our approach to teaching, it certainly helps to raise boys' attainment, but it helps to raise girls' attainment too. So, to be honest, we're not doing anything because they are boys. We're treating boys equally to the girls. This week, we're not just persuading on one side. We're not being biased. We are stating the issues on both sides of an argument. In the last programme, we observed a session with literacy coordinator Louise Bartlett. Louise introduced her Year 6 Mixed Ability class to a new text type, the Balanced Report. After watching video clips on fox hunting, Year 6 discussed the issue at length before beginning to write. There are several keys to the success at Ardley Green. One is the management of the school um, and the way that the curriculum is part of a systematic and planned review which takes account of where the children are, where they might be going. Most particularly within that were John's commitment to two key things, that is speaking and listening and mixed ability teaching. We also put like, they die instantly. Yeah, because then they dogs. shoot them in the air, don't they? Yeah, or when the dogs bite them on the back of the neck. Oh yeah, so they... I've watched the very youngest children in this school being put in a position of uh, having to present their ideas to their peers and it's tough when you're seven and, and eight mm. and they learn that it's cool to know things. It's all right to present yourself in front of others. And if they learn that from the moment they come into the school, then as they get older and perhaps more self-conscious, they still know that this is something that they're in a community of learners where they are going to be supported to, to say what they think. All we're doing is just wearing them out, as um, Ryan said, and um, we're just killing them, which isn't very kind. You so very often see um, some extremes of behaviour that, that boys might have. One is being very fearful so that when they write, they are quite physically tense, they want to rub things out, they, you know, they're fearful of making mistakes, therefore they don't try things and therefore they don't take their learning further. Or another e extreme reaction to fear and worry is to act up, so that uh, you, know, you may have a kind of bravado, which is a mask for feelings of insecurity. The projects that have encouraged that presentation of self publicly have made a lot of difference to the way that boys feel more self-assured. The main question that you're having in your head as they go through this is, have you heard both sides of the issue of fox hunting? Speakers and listeners, if you go. Hello, welcome to Channel 5 News. We're having a debate whether we should carry on fox hunting or ban it. And what's been very interesting for us as part of this project is just to see how the speaking and listening activities impact their writing. Mm -hmm. And we've looked at the same way as we look to structure children's writing. We also look at ways in which we can structure children's opportunities to develop their speaking and listening activities. It's the collaboration that leads to the presentation that's central to the success. The presentation is an end in itself, um, but the actual way in which they work, they engage, they have to take on responsibilities, different points of view, and with the sort of activity in the small, and the whole about balanced, 
you know, reports, etc., how it stems out of the speak and listen activity is quite remarkable. Foxes deserve to die if my poultry can die. If you know that the way that you talk to a group um, is influenced by their response, then when you come to writing, you're aware that you have to include a certain amount of information specifically for that reader. The other thing, of course, is that it gives the writing pace. When they've rehearsed things through talk, they know how it should go when it's written down on the page, they know that punctuation is a key factor in this, and so you get both voice and pace in the writing. And that's evident in, in all of the, the children's writing. Now, you've seen both sides of the argument. Now it's your turn to, to decide. Should fox hunting be banned? Ryan, you are our Writer of the Week. Give him a clap. <laughs> taking the topic of recycling, it's been brilliant to see the children so excited about taking their letters home. They're very excited about the idea of their parents writing back to us. That, to me, is most important because if the children are motivated, then they'll be keen to, to work on and improve what they've done. Did you know that you yourself use two trees worth of paper each year? And that is animals' homes that are being cut down. If you recycle that paper, it could save millions of animals' lives. It is also affecting humans. Trees give us oxygen. Author on literacy, Sue Palmer, agrees that teaching practices must provide added motivation for boys to read and write. I thought her competition with the Writer of the Week was a lovely one. Praise, opportunities to score in competition, also to um, score against yourself. Hello. Um, I like it how um, he's put, for all we know, so he's put the consequences that um, could happen if you don't recycle. She had a terrific peer assessment system going with the children. Again, whether they were very clear about how it was done, we want one good point, one way forward. What a lovely way of putting it. And they've got to have ownership through negotiated strategies and they've got to be trained up to it. Just imagine if no one recycles now. Imagine the world in 50 years. If you should care about the world and your children's future, you will recycle. There are lots of opportunities for the children to achieve outside of literacy, which then has a knock-on effect on what they do in the classroom. So we have quite a high focus on sporting activities. We have a large range of after-school clubs, ICT clubs, drama clubs, that catch children's interests that they then bring back into the classroom in terms of motivation. Within the literacy hour, I do believe it's the wide range of activities and the independence that the children feel they have over their own learning. Every child uh, on a weekly basis has the opportunity to work on an IT activity. We have this uh, variety of teaching which comes together which undoubtedly contributes to the improvement in standards for boys and for girls. And John has also encouraged each of the year groups of teachers to plan collaboratively and particularly to integrate any literacy work that they're doing with other areas of the curriculum so that you have a, a coherent, planned and well-managed series of literacy plus other subjects to support the children's development. Mm. A lot of people say that non-fiction is the best way in with boys. I think it can be if it's exciting and relevant and they've got um, a reason for what they're, they're reading and writing. I think also too much of the work we've done on fiction in the past has been very much to do with people's feelings and people's thoughts, which again appeals generally more to girls. But that doesn't mean to say that fiction can't be a good way in for boys. If you've got no idea what to read, some people do a little report 
on a book that they like and you get to and you just read through it and then you see if which if you like any and then if you do you can look for it getting children to recommend a text to a friend was an idea for really just stimulating reluctant readers or readers that haven't yet found any reading material that they think yeah this writer's for me the idea being that if they enjoyed their company and they enjoyed the same sense of humour, um, chances are they're going to enjoy the same type of reading material or the same type of text. I wasn't really confident when I was in primary. I didn't really like reading a lot. But then once I got into the books that I did like, because in primary they like give you set books and I don't really like them. But once we get into junior school you can pick. So I got a lot of them. Um, I got the books that I liked and then I got into reading. I've seen the film of this and I really enjoyed it and I thought, I, want, I just wonder what it would be in the book, what the differences are and what the similarities would be from the film and the book and I haven't read much of it and I'm really enjoying it at the moment, really into it. There's lots of books that boys enjoy reading. It's basically choosing material that you know your audience is going to like whether it's fiction or non-fiction, and making sure that the activities you do relating to it are as meaningful and as motivating as they can be. And that goes for everybody. Louise's teaching was full of the visual. I mean, Interactive Whiteboard is going to be a hugely useful resource with boys over the coming years, and her use of film to provide the content for what they were going to write about, because that's culturally what children are used to, now. that's where they get their content from. She also was using the skeleton technique, which um, National Literacy Strategy introduced. The point of that was that the six skeletons would serve first as a visual reminder of the text type, which is particularly important for boys, uh, but secondly as a planning device, so that before you write, you organise everything that you are wanting to say onto the skeleton plan. You saw that the, Louise's class doing a for and against chart Boys like being able to see how things work. You know, they take watches apart to see how they work. It's good to be able to take a sentence or a text apart to see how it works. Uh, I loved the way Louise was using colour because that's a great way of showing this bit of text does this and this bit of text does that. If we look here, what have we got on the end of that sentence? The question mark. Uh, so it's the sentence is a question. Good. I don't think the boys themselves have changed greatly at all. What's changed is our culture, and it's changed in many ways which has not been very good for boys. Things like becoming a, a more multimedia culture so that writing and reading are, are less essential. It's a quick fix it's a culture so that boys who have a poorer attention span find it more difficult to settle and, and learn. As the culture supported the way boys are, it's meant that it's harder and harder for schools to bring boys into the linear literacy line, which is not necessarily natural to them. The schools have got to recognise it, adapt, and, and look at the best ways to bring them on board.